Big tech is helping the market get back on track here today as NVIDIA and other AI themes are positive. NASDAQ's leading the way. We've got 40 minutes left. Let's bring in Sylvia Jablonski for a chat about what's hot in the tech ETF world. She's the chief investment officer at Defiance ETFs. Sylvia, welcome back. Thanks for being here on a Friday. Uh, what's most popular for you right now? What are you guys the most into over there? Thanks so much for having me, Oliver. Well, you know, we have been into it for quite a while, actually. Wow. Uh, in yeah, in 2018, we launched this, this quantum ETF, and essentially, you know, it was our thought that it was the best way for people to invest in AI, machine learning, and, you know, the quantum innovation. And so... QTUM, right? Yeah, Q2UM. Yeah, we call it quantum. And, you know, our thought on it was there's going to be AI and then, you know, the winners of AI will probably be the chip companies like NVIDIA and AMD. And so, you know, those are great. Buy them on the pullbacks, but they've run up. But there's this whole ecosystem around AI. Right. And, and that involves graphics that involves supercomputing that involves you know, just general technology, cybersecurity, uh, data storing and processing, visual basics, things like that. And there are a whole lot of companies that, you know, we don't talk about like IonQ, Rigetti, uh, IBM, we talk about a little bit, but not in the realm of AI and, and, and quantum. And, you know, these are great ways to get exposure to this trade and this tech innovation. Okay. So uh, how has it shifted? How has it changed uh, as this AI uh, development has kind of grown and we've seen different leaders and new products? Uh, how much stays in there that's in there? I mean, you got micro strategy is a big, I mean, that's basically a crypto trade that's in there. Yeah. Yeah, so it's super interesting because we've been getting so much feedback about about that, right? Like, why do you why do you have Bitcoin in the fund? And, and we're like, well, MicroStrategy is actually an AI company. We forget that because they're so heavily um, into crypto. But yeah, I mean, so the fund is the fund is so it's an AI company, right? But um, what happens is that the fund is rebalanced on a quarterly basis. So companies like MicroStrategy that run up and you know kind of merit their percentage growing during the quarter will have a larger percentage, but then it gets rebalanced quarterly. Um, back to equal weight. And we thought that that was important because, you know, you have the names like IBM, NVIDIA, AMD, you know, Google, like the, these stalwarts with like great balance sheets, quality companies that do a million other things. And, you know, they'll kind of hedge the smaller cap names in there that you haven't heard of that, you know, might really hit it if the AI innovation trend keeps going the way we think it will. I mean, doesn't micro strategy like go bankrupt if Bitcoin goes to like 20, isn't the math like pretty clearly tied to it now to whatever else they were doing? Like, I'm mean, sure they had a machine learning thing going on somewhere, but like, I mean, am I wrong? Yeah, no, you're totally not wrong. But again, remember that every quarter it's going to be down to 1%, ah, right? Okay. So because so, it's gone ballistic. Totally get, totally get your point. And I think if it was Mark, you know, if it was kind of like, a different type of methodology where we were trying to overweight that. Now, I totally get your point and say, you know, uh, uh oh, it's it's a it's a you know completely relying on Bitcoin, but it's not the case. There's 71 names in there, and it's equal weighted, so it's okay if MicroStrategy doesn't do well and Bitcoin doesn't do well because you have, you know, 70 other bets in the AI and machine learning. Um, super competing space. Hey, well, I'm sure nobody that's been in it is, at, is uh, having a problem with it right now. No, yeah. um, I mean, uh, you're up like 33% uh, in the last uh, year. Um, okay, so the uh, yeah. fund also generally has a lot of semiconductors. I think it's like it's up like 40% if the Bloomberg data is the latest. Yeah. Yeah, and so we know that, you know, the, the real winner of, of AI has been NVIDIA. You know, you can kind of argue that it's also Microsoft and, and whatnot. But I think in general, in order for the innovation in tech to continue, and if you're really talking about, you know, multi-trillion dollars of growth in the next five to 10 years, whether it's in cloud, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, you know, you need chips for that, right? And even driverless cars and things like that, that we sort of, you know, forget about the original AI types of trades. And, and so all of the chip companies are just major components in um, both quantum computing, supercomputing, and, and AI, whether it's, you know, kind of like parsing data, processing data, um, different dimensions of computing and, and things like that. And so they have to have a key role there. Um, and there's actually only a handful of pure quantum stocks. Um, and we think that super, super computing is going to be a key in order for AI to actually survive because you, you know, again, like you have to process this data and right now computers work in binary states. So you have, you know, multiple states, things can be done at the same time, large amounts of data can be processed. And then you think about things like 
you know, healthcare and, and where you really get those benefits of low latency speed and, you know, and so chips play into that, but also com computing companies play into that. I do wonder about how the market concentration at the index level has uh, affected the game for investors trying to pick ETFs because I mean, you're beating the S&P 500 handily, but the NASDAQ yeah. uh, a few percentage points behind because it's gotten so concentrated. When you have you know, holdings beyond 2030 when the NASDAQ's gotten as concentrated it is, would you expect these funds to outperform in a scenario where the concentration breaks down a little bit or would that hurt the hardware side of the positioning in the funds with the semiconductors? Yeah, so I think it depends on which which fund you look at, right? Like, I think if you look at the pure semiconductor funds and you kind of get this over concentration, you certainly have risk there. And, and you know, it could also be what ends up powering NASDAQ. But when you look at the the more thematic funds on this, like quantum and and even like the side, you know, kind of like the cyber thematic funds and the, you know, cloud and robotics related ETFs and things like that, I think that they, they differ, you know, I, I mean, you know, they're correlated enough where it's hard to say that they don't, you know, they don't do well what NASDAQ does well, but I do think that if we get this, you know, if we get this AI innovation and you get that M&A activity where like the small caps and the large caps start to truly participate, you can get outperformance for longer periods of time. And it's better diversification in tech, really, especially if you want AI, right? It's, it's, it's actually a good trade to pick an ETF for um, mm. if, you know, if you're kind of not an NVIDIA um, or if you want something else, it's, it's, it's good to use thematics for things like this. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, hey, real quick, uh, 5G, FIVG, uh, the other one uh, that you guys are looking at right now. And uh, there's a big Apple component here. Is this kind of more of a kind of pure like communications trade? Yeah, so this is really the this is meant to be the next generation of um, connective technology. And so it actually feeds it. You know, our vision of this was that quantum computing was essentially going to be AI, machine learning, supercomputing. Right. And something was going to have to power that. And you're going, you're going to have to have, you know, lower latency and, and communications and um, smart cities and, and connectivity. And so that was, you know, the thought behind 5G and actually 5G is kind of evolving into 6G really. Um, and so you're gonna have the companies that are that are in that space and allow for all of the technological advances to happen in AI. And that's, you know, that's really where that ETF sits. But yeah, I mean, you nailed it right. It's really like a, a next gen, you know, communications, innovative tech. All right, Sylvia, great to catch up. Thanks uh, for the refresh Thank on you. what you find most interesting. Always appreciate uh, how you're thinking about the tech stuff in particular. Thanks. Have a great weekend. All right, you too. Sylvia Jablonski, Chief Investment Officer at Defiance ETFs.